Hey guys, Retro Badger here. Welcome to the next episode of the Star Trek The Next Generation Final Unity playthrough. So when we left off, we were in this area and we were sending probes to these jellyfish, jelly corals apparently. Now what I forgot to do was pick up the bioprobe from the laboratory. So you need to do that basically or this won't work. So we're going to send the probes. It's just so we can take samples which will then give us some evidence the field hopefully is it oh. is not configured for this biotope so we can hopefully find out where the doctor's gone to because he's gone missing hasn't he right okay so that one didn't work try that one the field unit is stalled it is not configured for this biotope. Right, so how do I... Ah, so each one must be configured. Yes, there we go. I wasn't listening to what he was trying to tell me there. So we need to use the aquatic one. I do no. not believe that will work. Um, I think it will, Data. Ah, there it goes. Has he got something for us? I think he does. So we're going to take the bioprobe. There we go. So we've got our first sample. How good's that? While we're at it, let's turn this back on. There we go, we've got some TV on. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are within the jelly corals and the water. Okay, so we need to get a few more samples. We need at least three, I believe, from each biotope. So, where have you put him? It is. Let's try that one. It doesn't work on each one, from what I remember. I had to actually look in the guide, because I got quite stuck with this part. Believe it or not, you can actually still buy the guide off eBay. And it's not for a ridiculous price, either. Okay. I remember being at school and uh, somebody had this game. Right. And he kept bringing the instruction book for the game in and we were all there looking at it going, oh, I wish I had this. Because at the time, I think Star Trek The Next Generation was very, very popular. It was... Um, quite mainstream. It was watched by people who weren't particularly into Star Trek. Okay. Get ready with our probe. And there we go. We've got three. Let's uh, take... You there. Let's take the power core back. And we'll go to the other ones now. So I do not believe that will work. Right. So we'll go to the bog forest biotope next. Now if you hold the shift key down, he walks a lot faster. And I'd recommend doing it, unless you want to be waiting five minutes for him to walk across the screen. Right, here we go. Let's put the power unit in, just to see what happens. Might give us some clues. Okay. This is a topographical map of the biotope. 
The main habitats are the four tunnels within that petrified tree. Right, so... <laughs> What's that thing? So he's given us a clue there, hasn't he? He's told us that it's the tunnels over here. So if we can send... I'm not sure which one, but we'll just try one. These probes are configured for different environments. I think this one will be alright. It was just the aquatic one. It probably needed to be waterproof or something. Or configured to look at um, water-based animals, perhaps? Organisms? It's quite fascinating, this game. Like, you really feel like you're doing science work. I have to be honest though, the combat side of things, I've only tried doing it a few times and it is really difficult, especially when you're on the ship. Right, let's see. Basically, you can't make a mistake, and if you do, the ship gets destroyed. Okay. Um, be back. I do miss the days when graphics used to be this way. It, you sort of use your imagination more, I think. I like that. The fact though that it's actually got the voice of the characters in the game as well, that's, that's absolutely huge for the time. Okay, so... believe there's only three we need to... yes. Yeah, oh wait, no, there's a fourth one up there. Oh, right, okay. Well, if we're going to do it, we'll do it properly. What we're going to do once we've got these samples, we have to go to one more biosphere. We're going to go to the laboratory and run some tests on them. Does Worf always walk around holding his phaser? Right, last one. The Owen Tree. We would need several days to completely search this area ourselves. The field units could accomplish the task in far less time. I'm going to get the micro generator. We don't want to leave that behind. I do not believe that will work. Yeah, I think without a guide, this game is particularly difficult. You can't just really bluff your way through it. It's enjoyable though. I'm really enjoying it. I'd recommend it if you don't have it already. Okay. The neural cells of this deceased Comtru shows unusual readings. Additional lab work would be advisable. Right. Yeah, if you can get this working, um, it's definitely worth it. There is actually a website uh, where you can go to and somebody's actually built a custom package which will make it work using DOSBox. I highly recommend it and I'll put a link below so you can check it out. Okay. This is a topographical map of the biotope. 
The main habitats are the caverns, the pit, and the crater. So he said the crater, the caverns, and the pit. Okay. Hmm. Different one, perhaps? Wow, he carries a lot in his pocket, doesn't he? Where is it? Hmm. I see no way of using this with that object. Worth a try, Data. Okay. We've only got two of these. I thought we had three. Oh, that's strange. Ah. Here we go. In the distance. I'm gonna try doing this again. I see no way of using this with that object. The field unit is stalled. It is not configured for this biotope. Okay. I see no way of using this with that object. Right. So we're using the wrong one then is what you're saying. Um Thing is, we only have two. Have I left one behind or something? Yeah, I'm pretty certain this game's classed as abandonware now, as it's, um, wow. When did it come out? I think it was around 1994, so we're getting on for 28 years now, so I wouldn't worry about too much about that. Although I would always recommend um, purchasing software, because, well, it keeps them going, doesn't it, I suppose? We would need several days to completely search this area ourselves. The field units could accomplish the task in far less time. I, um, buy all of my Star Trek games through GOG. Also, I think it makes it more likely that we'll get newer Star Trek games the more people who buy these older games, because it shows that there's demand for it as well. Okay... Right. So we've done the pits, crater. I actually own a copy of this game as well, uh, which I bought in the 90s, um, but I could never get it running. So when I saw a, a guy who, who put it on a website and he, he's basically, he's changed the configuration files basically and it just, it works, that's all I can say. Dr. Hun Forsch programmed these field units to search for specific information. Let's send them out and see what they bring back. That's what we are doing. I always felt like Dr. Crusher was the one character that didn't really fit in. Gosh, this is time consuming. You'd think they'd like think of a way of doing it a bit quicker, wouldn't you? Okay. So there. Whoops. This sample indicates a vegetarian diet, but the ID tag identifies the Sunil rodent as a carnivore. Additional lab work would be advisable. Okay, let's find a gap, there we go, take you back. Right, so there should be one last place. We've done the, have we done the crater? We did the pit? I'm sure we did. Oh, what? Is this the thing? It's like you're guessing where to go. Caverns, there we go.
just in case, while we're waiting for that. This is a topographical map of the biotope. The main habitats are the caverns, the pit, and the crater. Right, so we've got all the areas covered now. So we'll just wait for the probes to come back. And then we can be on our merry way. It's taking its time, isn't it? I think it's coming back now. A probe. Excellent. Right, we have all our samples now, so we can head to the lab and find out what's going on. Use path. Oh yeah, walk. <laughs> okay, let's speed walk. Let's go to the laboratory. Like a Benny Hill sketch. Alright, so we have the sonic scope I believe we need to use. Brutal. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subjects' neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Oops. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject contains high ionic residue and trace amounts of neural tranquilizers. Originating creature may consume energy. It's just pretty obvious that these creatures have been, well, tortured, I suppose. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. All readings are normal. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Mmm, naughty. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's neural pathways have been drained of electrical energy. Right, I think... I think that should be enough, I think. Let's see. Serial diagnostic tests and cell density analysis complete. Subject's genetic signature differs from its identification tag. Right, so let's go and try and speak to somebody. Consultant Lydia, I believe. Open channel to Consultant Idia. Channels open. Oh, Idia, sorry. I wish to ask you some questions. Look, I'm in the middle of some very delicate research. Can't you find someone else to bother? Charming. Open a channel to Healer Zolas. Channels open. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Hmm, a Starfleet officer. I was expecting this. Tracker Malas indicated that you knew of a confrontation between Dr. Hoon Forsh and the Constable. Yes, the doctor mentioned it when she asked about Aramit. He's a Ferengi who provides us with alien species for the preserve. Was she inquiring about mistagged animals from his shipment? Yes, she had spoken to Zudan, one of the three watchers in charge of the last shipment. He told her to talk to Aramit. 
Hmm. On several occasions, the watchers requested restricted species and were denied. Is it possible that Aramut was secretly supplying the watchers with illegal species? Aramut has a rather unsavory reputation. The watchers wouldn't have anything to do with someone like that. But you can ask Zudan yourself. Did Consultant Idia know of Aramut's reputation when he recommended him for a traitor? Considering how long Idia and Aramut have known each other, I would think so. Those two go back quite a while. I think Idia even came here on Aramut's ship. Hmm. Did the other Watchers also tell her to speak to Aramut? I doubt it. The other Watchers were at the quarantine shelter and suffered some kind of neural energy drain when the generators exploded. They've been comatose ever since. Zudan's the only Watcher on duty now. We have found several animals which suffered energy drains. Perhaps we could compare neuroscans to see if the injuries are similar. Ah! I'll send you the Watcher's neuroscans. You can view them on the bio table, but I recommend you speak to Watcher Zudan. You can find him at the quarantine shelter. Thank you for your time. Mm, certainly. Good luck to you. Hmm. Idia was the last to see Dr. Hunforsh before she disappeared. Idia is friends with a Ferengi, and Ferengi traders are not known for their honor. Perhaps Idia is guilty. The Watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, like the Myocorde Mole. Okay. The BioTable incorporates bioassay hardware to analyze specimens and perform scans. I do not believe that will work. The Watchers suffered an electrical energy drain from their neural pathways, like the Myocorde Mole. All right, let's go back to the person that we met at the beginning. This is almost turning into a Scooby-Doo episode. Okay. That's right, the constable's office is up there. Aha. Has there been any contact with Dr. Hun Forsh? No, I'm afraid not. Hmm. That is unnecessary. Can we talk to the bird? Visitors for Constable Lixie. Constable Lixie is present. I believe we should interview Watcher Zudan. He may have had contact with Dr. Hun Forsh. Okay, so we're not going to get anything out of Constable Lixie, um, so we're going to go to Watcher Zudan, who's in the quarantine bit. Quarantine shelter, there we go. They actually tried giving me hints then, because I got stuck again. Aha! Now, I don't think we could get to this bit last time. Careful, Data. Mind you, you're probably like 50 times stronger than Worf, so it'll be fine. Data? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Thought he'd wandered off somewhere. I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. I'm responsible for preserve animals, not Federation scientists. I understand the doctor spoke to you of her concerns regarding smuggling in the preserve. Yes, she came here soon after the outages, ranting away. Imagine, accusing me, when I'm the one who told her about that boar mistagging. Mmm. I have examined the neuroscans of the injured watchers. The electrical energy within their neural pathways has decreased significantly. How could that have happened? I don't know. 
During my evening rounds, I found them unconscious next to the Saltus reptile cage. I carried them outside the shelter and was going for help when the generators exploded. When did you last see Dr. Hyun Forsh? I haven't seen her for some time. I've been busy recovering animals which escaped during the power outages. It's not easy work. The last time I saw her, I sent her to talk to Aramut. Were you the one who found the carcass? Yes. It died just before the outages, and I wanted her to test it. Hmm. Why did you not ask Consultant Idiot to test the carcass? I don't trust him. Always drugging and borrowing animals for his experiments. In the interests of science, he says. I don't know how he could have approved that mistagging in the first place. Do the Watcher stunners set off the preserve surveillance system? The system only detects signs of distress. Normal sleep does not raise an alarm. Likewise, stunners and neurotranquilizers also don't alert the system. Unlike Idia and Aramit, we prefer stunners. Chemical sedation can be harmful. Consultant Idia mentioned that only watchers can change the ID tags. That's true, but the suppliers tag the animals first. We just match them up with the constable's shipping orders. Idia is responsible for verifying them. Is it true that the watchers' requests for restricted species were rejected? Only four species out of 112. Of course, we were upset at first, but once the preserve is completed, we can always try again. What creature was in this area? A two-meter-long, 180-kilogram Saltus reptile, which came in on the last shipment. I found the watchers next to its cage the night of the outages. It's still missing. My readings show traces of a tranquilizing agent in its waist. Aramut always doses his animals with neurotranquilizers, just like Idia. We had to feed the reptile intravenously for days. It finally woke up right before the accident, just in time to escape. These readings share the same ionic residue as samples found near other creatures drained of electrical energy. And this cage is also next to the drain generator. Perhaps the Saltus reptile is a mistagged animal that consumes electrical energy. Mm. But there were no reports of it being seen near any of the power outages. And that reptile isn't easy to miss. Unless it's found a way to turn itself invisible, you're going to need another theory. We have encountered several species capable of phasing out of the time continuum and, in effect, becoming invisible. We have also encountered species who consumed human neural energy. The Saltus reptile may be a life form with similar characteristics. Well, if you believe so, I suppose it's possible. Thank you for your time. Watch your step now. Idia persuaded the constable to use Aramut, and Idia is also capable of verifying this tag species. And he had the neurotranquilizers to knock out Dr. Hun Forsch if she posed a threat to him. Only stunners or drugs could disable someone without setting off the surveillance systems. Idia has a supply of neurotranquilizers. Very much just copying what uh, the council said there, aren't you, Doctor? Okay, so let's go back to the the boss guy. Got his name. The constable. How could I forget that? I just think of Odo with that, though. This is definitely turning into a Scooby-Doo episode. And they would have got away with it if it wasn't for these meddling kids. Hmm. Okay, Constable, you're in trouble. Constable, there's reason to believe that Consultant Idiot was smuggling rare species into the preserve through his friend Aramut. Are you trying to pick up where Dr. Hunforsch left off? She accused nearly everyone else of the same thing. Idia persuaded you to hire Aramut and knowingly verified mistagged rare species. 
Iria also uses neurotranquilizers, which he could have used to subdue Dr. Hyun Forsh without triggering the surveillance system. Iria's been nothing but trouble since he got here. This time he's gone too far. I'll send for him so we can settle this once and for all. Whoa. Please wait here until Constable Lixie returns. Okay, Big Bird. Wow. That was quick. Ooh. Constable, we asked Consultant Idia to go to your office. He went to get some items, then suddenly beamed out. He seems to be gone. He must have called Aramid for help. The Ferengi has a subspace transporter. See if you can find Dr. Hunforsch. There's a woman here asleep with a gag over her mouth. Maybe she knows. That's her, you idiot. Take her and send her here. <laughs> and have a look around Idia's office while you're there. He might have left some evidence. Wow, he looks like the Power Rangers guy. Zord Zordon or something? I can't quite remember his name. Um... Hmm. That was cool. Oh, here we go. Have you captured it yet? No. Unfortunately, he escaped with Aramut. This Federation team was sent to find you. Perhaps they can help. Forget them. We have to recapture the Mistag Sultis. It's already killed dozens of animals and destroyed several containment field generators. This creature needs to be captured. Constable, have you restored power to the quarantine shelter generators? The shelter force field will not help us. The creature escaped once and it will escape again. We could try to rephase the force field energy frequencies. It might be enough to stop the creature. That might work. But the only place we can rephase the force field power is at the main power grid. I'll go rephase the force field power. Good. The power grid is on the other side of the preserve. Take one of the shuttles. I hate to interrupt, but just how are we supposed to lure this creature back to the shelter? What about the harmonic collector? It can emit high energy EM fields. Let's use that as bait. Yes, that should do it. V. I'll send one of the watchers with you to the shelter to help set it up. If we can get the field power rephased, we might get that thing under control. I'll stay and monitor the situation from here. Okay. This is one criticism in the show, and I know the actress, um... Oh, hang on. Go away. He played, um... Councillor Troy. She was never happy with the storylines that she was given. And I think that just shows that, you know, she still knew a lot. And she also held the rank of commander, I believe. So, let's go to the shuttle. Oh, here we go! Alrighty. Now I think I'm gonna trust data with this one. Mm. The energy fields are responding. Frequency phasing complete. Constable, has the harmonic collector been arranged? Yes, but Dr. Hunforsch needs your help at the quarantine shelter. The only watchers I could find are needed to oversee the other biotopes. We will be there. Just one more thing. Zudan tells me those generators won't hold up for long, and we can't afford to send much power to the shelter right now. Many biotopes are already on reserve power only. We will review the situation at the shelter when we arrive. Where will you be? I'll be controlling electrical systems from my office. Then I have to call an emergency meeting of the Morassian Constabulary to explain just what's going on. All right. I do not believe that will work. Do we actually have to do anything here with this? This is the utilities distribution network. It controls the allocation of resources in the preserve, including electricity. Hmm. Oh, tricorder. I forgot about that. 
Well, it sounds like from what um, she's saying, we don't actually need to do anything else in there. So we just walk in there. Ah! Have you devised a means to trap the creature? It's all set up, but I need you to operate those consoles while I keep an eye on the creature from here. What do you wish me to do? The harmonic collectors hooked into console two. Once activated, it'll emit high energy pulses to lure the creature in. Okay. Ooh. I do not believe that will work. I do not believe that will work. What is the next step? Once the creature gets here, close the gates. The controls are on console one. Of course. Oh. Quick, Data. <laughs> but we've uh, tasered it. Oh, there we are. We did it. Now what took you so long to find me? The investigation was actually quite short in duration. Apparently your absence was not keenly felt. Constable Lixie had attributed your absence to a field trip. She was probably still upset that I accused her of smuggling. I suppose I should apologize to her, now that I know Idia was behind the whole thing. How did Consultant Idia learn that you suspected him? Did you accuse him of smuggling as well? I didn't confront him. I was just looking for information. But after I asked him about the Sultis, he must have panicked and decided to drug me. I should have suspected when he invited me to dinner. He hates to hear people talk while he eats. It appears the Watchers knew nothing of Idia's scheme to smuggle rare animals into the preserve through Aramut. They were the ones who brought the Mistag boar to my attention in the first place. They weren't smuggling any. Apparently, Consultant Idia underestimated this reptile's appetite for electrical energy. That egotist, thinking he could get away with it. Some of these animals are even from Romulan space. Did he think I wouldn't notice? Are you certain the animals are Romulan in origin? It would take more tests to be certain. But they definitely came from Romulan space. It's not surprising. Aramut does a lot of trading along the neutral zone. What will happen to this reptile? I'm sure Constable Lixie will want to send it back. Unless I can convince her to keep it here. A creature like that doesn't come by every day. I believe the captain will want to pursue Idia and Aramut. Will this incident significantly delay completion of the preserve? It'll be a little behind schedule. But I have a few suggestions to help them speed things up. Then it is time we return to the Enterprise. Good luck, Doctor. Woo! Beam us up. Captain's Log Supplemental. Our successful attempt to locate Dr. Hunforsch has uncovered another mystery. Apparently, the creature responsible for the chaos on Marassia may have come from Romulan space. Mm. We are currently searching for the Ferengi trader Aramut. Despite somewhat questionable trading practices, he has never violated Federation law until now. Captain, Tabak asks to speak with you. Captain, I heard about what happened on Morassia. That creature you discovered, it sounds exactly like a Veranak, a Garidian creature. Except the Veranak was exterminated long ago. How could a Ferengi trader get hold of an extinct animal? I have a theory. The followers brought many animals with them when they fled Gerid. It may be that this creature came from the followers' colony. So if we learn where he got the animal, we may learn where the fifth scroll is. I think this is a promising lead to pursue. Captain, we've found Aramut. A Ferengi trader should be at Jaward 3. Set a course for the Jaward system. Engage. Ooh. Cutscene. Engage. 
Great, well, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next episode at Jawad 3. Bye for now.